What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Chaotic Productions. The Last of Us TV show has officially launched. Episode 1 just aired. Just finished up watching it. And man, as a Last of Us fan, I am very, very happy with what we've seen so far. Just in this first 85 minutes. We're going to break it down here, talk about it. Spoiler warning, we are going to discuss things that happen in this show. If you did not watch the episode yet, click off, bookmark this video, go watch the episode, come back, and get a full in-depth analysis of episode one of The Last of Us right now. All right, so we're going to get right into it. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, The Last of Us is a TV show that is going to release episode by episode on HBO Max. Uh, first episode did just come out. At the time of this recording. And we're going to begin an episode every single week. For a total of 10 episodes in the series. For season 1. Uh, it's based off the hit and bestseller. PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 series. The Last of Us. You start off this. Uh, very different from the game. As in the game you do start off. Uh, at In the night time. To your father, Joel, who is the main uh, protagonist in the show. You start off with him arriving home to his daughter, Sarah, on his birthday. However, with this, it takes a different role. You start off in the daytime. You start off in the early morning. Joel and Sarah waking up. And you find out it's Joel's birthday. Sarah is making Joel breakfast. Uh, and this is where you're also introduced to uh, another main protagonist who you will not see till later in the show. And you won't see again until later in the game. You're introduced to Joel's brother, Tommy. Uh, Tommy's going to be a main focal point in uh, part one or episode one of the uh, game and all the episodes in the TV show. But you're also he becomes a big main focal point in Last of Us Part 2 and where will be an even bigger focal point in seasons two and three of the Last of Us TV show. Um... You basically find out it is a little different with this game or with this show. As you are, instead of it being um, set in the time era of 2013, this is set 10 years prior. So this takes place in 2003 uh, and then transports 20 years later to 2023, which is shockingly our current year. Um, yeah, so very interesting. But consistency is key in this and that's why i'm very happy that neil Druckmann uh was able to do a lot of the directing and producing on this because they did stay they did stay key to a lot of what the game did they basically just put it in tv form pedro pascal is already showing why he got this role and why he is Honestly, probably one of the best actors we have seen uh, in this day and age. I'm loving all his work, and he's going to make an awesome Joel, and I'm ready just for all of it. Um, it basically just goes through the day, uh, basically what I'll consider day zero, because it's, it's a normal day. Sarah ends up getting Joel's watch fixed, which, um, if I remember right from the game, he got earlier in life. And it was just sitting in the drawer. Sarah gets it fixed. And this is where you kind of see things start to deravel. The watch shop immediately closes. Uh, the watch owner's wife uh, wants to close up early. Things on the news are not s saying good things and saying that, you know, stuff is getting bad. And Sarah ends up going back home uh, and going over to her next door's neighbor's house to bake cookies and just hang out over there. Um, and this is where you start to get, you get a little glimpse, uh, you see the next door neighbor's, uh, mother actually in her wheelchair and you see her start to basically go into, uh, freaker form. Uh, I'm going to call them freakers. It's just, I don't consider them zombies. I consider them more of like freakers, um, or, you know, psychotic infected. Um, but I think we're just going to go with freakers. It probably won't hurt with, uh, YouTube's them on demonetization either um but they're freakers infected whatever you want to call them uh you start to get a little glimpse that you know it's there and basically sarah ends up going home after a little bit 
and you then hit the point to where the game starts off. Sarah's sitting on the couch, Joel arrives home later than expected, and Sarah ends up gifting Joel his watch. They go on a little bit back and forth. Uh, Joel asks how she got the money. She says she was uh, selling on the street. Laughs, jokes all around. She ends up telling him how she got the money. She took it from his drawer, but put back the change. And, you know, she does present him with a movie as well that she borrowed from the next door neighbor that Joel wanted to watch. And... The scene ends with um, watching that movie and Joel telling Sarah not to fall asleep. Sarah ends up falling asleep though, and Joel gets a call from Tommy, where Tommy is now locked up in prison or in jail for a uh, gang in a bar fight. So that is one thing that does differ uh, in the so in the show. Joel, we don't find out why Joel was out, but Joel ends up arriving back home uh, later in the game. Joel arrives back home uh, after Sarah had woken up. With this one, Joel leaves while Sarah's still sleeping. Joel leaves, brings her up to her room, leaves, goes bails out Tommy. And Sarah awakes to helicopters and planes and all that military stuff flying overhead. And she sees the neighbor's dog, who I believe was named Mercy, clawing at the door. Uh, the TV is just saying to stay inside. So very similar to the game where the TV basically cuts uh, after a explosion. TV cuts to just stay inside, don't go outside, you know, whatever. Uh, Sarah goes outside and goes to the next door neighbor's house where she encounters an infected. And you see the infected or the freaker for the first time. And you see the new thing that they actually in, uh, put into this show, show that differs from the game. Infected do not carry spores. You do not need to wear masks around them. Instead, infected have what they are calling tendrils, um, which um, the best way I think I can describe it is imagine like spikes on a rose or uh, spikes on a plant uh, that basically just drill, drill into the uh, human that they will get to when they become infected. And you can see it coming out the mouth of the mother. Uh, she, The mother ended up killing both the other people that were living in the house. And Sarah is chased outside where Joel and Tommy arrive in their pickup truck and Joel ends up killing the, uh, mo the mother of the next door neighbor uh, with a wrench. So a little different there. Uh, in the game, it's Jimmy who worked in the city that ends up uh, being the first infected you see and Joel killing him and Tommy then arriving and them doing all that. This is completely different, um, but I do like the approach. And as Joel, Tommy, and Sarah drive off, they run over the other two that were killed inside the house who did become infected. Uh, they drive off and then the neighbor proceeds that came outside their neighbor proceeds to get eaten and infected. Uh, you then cut to a high speed Car race basically trying to get out of the city. You're in Austin, Texas um, on September 26th. So that is the premise of that's day zero to me. That's the day I'm going to consider. I do not remember if it is like that in the game. I'm not sure if we even got a date. Um, but in the series, it is September 26th. Um, and you see a lot of things that they did have in the game. They drive by the barn. Now, they do say the barn was owned by Jimmy. So, maybe Jimmy owned the barn instead of being the next door neighbor. But, hey, they incorporated Jimmy in. But Jimmy's barn was on fire. Sarah and Joel notice and Tommy. Um, and then they end up driving by a family who is stranded after their car broke down. And Joel says, we got to keep going. We have a kid. Tommy mentions they have a kid. But he said, look, we have one. We, we, someone else will come. Uh, we never know if someone else does. So it, a little sad there, but, you know, hey, survival. He, he, he's trying to keep his kid, he's trying to keep Sarah alive. Uh, from there, they end up hitting the highway, and everyone else had the same plan to get out of Austin, Texas, and they're stuck on the highway. Um, so unlike the game, they end up cutting through a, four, um, a field of grass, a long field. Military is there, so they end up going north. And heading into the city, into uh, the city of Austin, Texas, the prime city, um, where everything is really bad. You end up seeing a plane flying over them that is jittery, uh, without controls. 
and you proceed to see a lot of the stuff that was in the game with the city. Joel and Tommy almost crash. Uh, they are good. They get trapped around a bunch of people, and they have to end up backing up. And then the plane that you saw ends up crashing, and that is what had make Tommy, Joel, and Sarah crash. Uh, unlike the game, where the game, you basically just went, uh, you got T-boned by another truck. Uh, in this, the plane and plane crashing ends up making you crash, and you awake. Uh, scene goes to black. Scene awakes with Sarah and Joel being on one side. Sarah's ankle is hurt, fractured, broken, something. It is hurt. She can't walk. Tommy is on the other side. He says they will meet up at the river, and you see Joel and Sa uh, Joel pick up Sarah and take off. Joel encounters uh, about seven, eight infected runs through and this is where they had a very condensed it down in the game you cut through it's about a five to ten minute sequence with this it was literally maybe about 90 seconds to two minutes at most uh it's one infected only chasing them down as well the infected ends up getting taken out by the military and then the military personnel calls in that he has two people one's hurt and he gets orders as all the military do have to execute and take out Joel and Sarah. Joel tries to convince him. Military man shoots. Joel turns. They both, Sarah and Joel, roll down a hill. And from there, uh, you see Joel is about to get uh, killed. And Tommy ends up shooting dead the military man. And what I... Man, I, I had to relive it again. And... Every time I play the game and I, I play the game over again, it's it's a tough scene to see. And, man, it does suck. Sarah has been shot. Sarah was unfortunately hit by the bullet that the military person had shot. And she ends up dying in Joel's arms. And, geez, I'm teared up now just thinking about it. It is a really, really sad scene. Um, I've seen it so many times now, but... Man, seeing real actors actually portray that scene, man, it's sad. It, it, it's a little girl. It's a 12-year-old girl dying, in, in whether it's a game, a TV show, whatever. It's sad. It's a man's daughter. Um, and then you have the screen cut to black. 20 years later pops up. You're now in the year 2023. Joel is living in a quarantine zone out in my neck of the woods out in boston massachusetts um and this is where everything basically picks up um you know if you play the game that boston is a main focal point for the first probably 15 percent of the game um and joel is basically just working you know the odd jobs uh that the furda require they require all their civilians to work you get rations and uh what I believe they were calling um, basically rations, which is basically stuff to buy, you know, food, water, uh, probably pay for shelter, whatever it is, you gotta work. Um, Joel is low key a dealer on the side as he's dealing uh, what looks to be um, things to military. Um, basically trying to get out of the quarantine zone, it, we find out he wants to go find Tommy, which is accurate to his, uh, accurate to the game. And we then meet Tess. Tess uh, was jumped by Robert's goons. Robert is a uh, arms dealer, uh, a dumb arms dealer, but he is an arms dealer uh, who would help Jess and Toll, uh, Jess and Tess and Joel get stuff. We're going one take here, so. Um, and Robert ends up roughing up Tess. Uh, the Fireflies end up invading uh, Robert's uh, home. And Tess is taken out by Ferda Militia, thinking that she was a uh, Firefly. She ends up getting arrested. And, you know, we don't see her until she arrives home. Uh, and Joel questions her. Joel basically, you know, she Tess tells Joel, hey... They jumped me. They sold our battery. Uh, Joel was trying to get a battery for a truck. That is why he was dealing with the military, dealing some stuff on the side um, to basically get a truck going to go and find Tommy, who was in Wyoming. That is his last um, 
known area and he is a part of Fireflies. You will end up learning that. He is a part of Fireflies. Marlene did end up negotiating with him um, to join. Joel says, you turned my brother against me, all that stuff. Um, but Joel wants to go out and find him. Um, you also get parts of it where they are in the Firefly uh, encampment and Ellie is locked up. Going under the name Veronica at first, so she would not give her real name. Uh, they basically are doing tests on her. Um, manual and psychological tests to see even though she's infected is she still you know a human is she still alive and she does all that unwillingly telling them to fuck off but um, she does that and you then break uh, into Joel and Tess basically having to go retrieve the battery themselves they're gonna go and try and kill Robert they go through the tunnel the Haymarket tunnel which is um, the uh, Boston train, uh, Boston Transit for trains. Uh, they end up going to the Orange Line, which is Haymarket. They mention, and they go down, and this is where you see the first um, in engrowment of how infected happen and how you become infected. Um, and they wonder if there's someone down there, if the if the infected are down there. They climb a ladder, and they end up entering a building. It is different from the game. Um, and again, they have to save time. This part of the game, this is probably like two or three hours of the game alone. You're in this area. They don't have that much time. Um, but you do a bunch of other things to get to Robert. You end up having to kill probably 40 to 50 different of his goons in the game. There's multiple different areas. It's a, it's a tedious long mission. Um, and, you know, you end up killing Robert. Um, and then Marlene finds you, and Marlene will escort you to Ellie, and then you'll escort Ellie to back to your safe house until you can leave when it becomes nighttime. In this one, you end up finding Robert and his crew dead, along with a bunch of Marlene and the Fireflies crew, and then you end up finally Joel and Marlene and Tess all um, come face to face. Marlene is injured along with one of her Firefly mates, uh, Kim, her basically right-hand woman. Uh, she is injured, Marlene has been shot, Kim had her ear ripped off, Ellie tries to attack Joel, Joel deflects it, hides the knife under his shoe, and Marlene basically um, cuts a deal with Joel that if Joel and Tess can transport Ellie to the state house in Boston, where her fireflies are waiting for Ellie, that, uh, that um, Marlene will basically get Joel and Tess whatever they need get them the battery, you know, supplies. Uh, in the game, it was mainly guns, um, guns and supplies that Tess and Joel were after. This, it's a car battery along with some other necessities um, to have Joel hopefully go find Tommy. Joel and Tess, Joel agrees because um, he does want to go find his brother and you end up then having them go back to the safe house with Ellie Tess goes out to scout and do some scouting. Joel takes a nap, um, and it basically it will cut to black. And then you wake up. Uh, Joel wakes up. He was having a bad nightmare about the incident with Sarah, um, which he still, you know, probably has PTSD about. We know he does, um, and he's struggling. Ali uh, mentions that he mumbles in his sleep, um, and she's just, you know, she's never seen past the walls so she's happy to go outside she's excited to go past the walls Tess arrives home and or back to the safe house and they know it's risky they end up leaving they cut they are basically cutting through Lancaster Street uh, as they mentioned in the show and they're outside the walls they cut through the underground tunnel up through a uh, sewer grate and they're in the tunnels and they are now outside uh, Joel Tess and Ellie end up encountering the uh, main military man that Joel was dealing uh, his stuff to. And he tells Joel, he said, I told you to stay inside. I told you to stay inside the walls. There's nothing I can do now. Get on your knees. He checks Tess. Tess passes for the being affected. He checks Joel. Joel passes. Ellie ends up stabbing the military guy in the leg. Uh, after getting scanned, Joel then is 
uh, having PTSD flashbacks to the military man shooting Sarah and him, and he ends up viciously attacking the military man and mur- uh, killing him um, with his bare hands. And you see the look on Ellie's face. Ellie is, you would think distraught, but Ellie's actually happy. Someone is standing up for her and, and protecting her. Um, you could tell just by the look on her face. And Joel, Tess, and Ellie end up having to get out of that area. And they head into Boston past a quarantine gate. Uh, as the military is chasing them down, we don't see the military. And you get one final uh, zoom out of where they're going. If you play the game, you would see uh, the big building. That's where they first come into contact with clickers and way more infected. Uh, you see the big building that, they come in, uh, that they're coming that they going to be going in contact with. And you get a little glimpse at a clicker on top of a building, uh, on top of a building screaming. And the show proceeds to end the episode ends um runtime on it was about 78 minutes the final 78 minutes was basically a sneak preview at what else is coming up for the nine remaining episodes and a behind the scenes look at how everything was shot and how some stuff was shot and done for episode one of the show so final thoughts episode was everything i expected it to be i've been waiting longer than ever to watch the show um when i say the last of us guys is something i truly do love it's by far my favorite game series of all time um it's my favorite playstation ip of all time and joe and ellie are some of my (laughs) over here tearing up Guys, I love this show. I love the game. I love everything about it. Joe and Ellie are some of my favorite video game characters of all time. Um, So much so that I actually plan on getting Ellie and Joel uh, tattooed right over here on my arm. Uh, I have a nice portrait I found that I want to get done of them. And I also hope I might end up getting something of a quote tattooed as well. Um, I have... I have the last of us part two collector's edition i have statues i have funko pops of them i'm buying an 80 dollar two pack of figures and i'm even going to go on my way eventually to get the collector's edition of the first last of us for ps3 which costs around a thousand to two thousand dollars i love this franchise and we are going to review every single episode half right after it is these videos will get uploaded within the hour of the episode airing and me being able to watch it every episode getting filmed right after we're going to talk about it episode one this is it if you guys enjoyed i appreciate you stopping by hit that subscribe button turn on those notifications by hitting that bell like the video comment below if you're excited for the last of us and let your friends know hey come check out my reviews we're going to go in depth every week but with that being said it's your boy chaotic for Chaotic Productions. I'm out, and until next time, guys, peace.